Hey guys, this is a continuation of my top 20 squad battles video where we're going to take on this 88 overall team with this team. Not 88 overall, in fact, a lot of 80 to 82 overalls with some loan cards involved. It's actually 87 overall. But that's not the point because he has synergies activated, I don't. But let's get this game started so I can show you and explain to you what I did and hopefully you can do the same after. The first play of the game, he gives me an easy zone entry. I try to cut across and shoot far side toward the open net, but he's going to stop me. I'm still warming up a little bit, so I'm going to give him one of his only opportunities in this game. Breaking out, the first thing that I notice is there is no four check on this AI whatsoever. They're very passive. They have the 1-3-1 one, one setup, so you can take as much time as you want trying to enter the zone at least when the game's like this. I'm going to step up and deliver some hits because I noticed that his players are all alone. He's not going to pass to anyone that's going to put me in a bad spot. He dumps the puck and here we go again. I try to cut across a little bit, doesn't work out, so instead I'm going to back up, lose the puck just as I planned. No, not really. And I'm just really aggressive on the puck here. I go for the hip check, I miss, but he just doesn't have any good passing lanes open. Now that we are breaking out, he's not in his setup, so it gives me another easy zone entry. I take a slap shot far side, and it's a pretty good opportunity to score. When he tries to enter the zone, I take my player furthest back, and I try to get ahead of him with the defensive skill stick. And then when I enter his zone, I take the same kind of shot except on this side. The defensive skill stick is really powerful. The opponent pretty much runs into your stick, which causes him to lose the puck. You can do it by holding down the RB or R1 button and then using the right stick to control where you want your stick to go. And if he comes too close to his skates, that's when you let go of the R1 or RB button just so that you don't trip him. Now we won the face off and we're cycling it in his own. One of my favorite shots to take is that I back skate and then I shoot low far side. Many times it gets redirected in front of the net by one of my own guys, giving me a better opportunity to score. Another face-off against a superstar AI, I've learned that the best way to win face-offs against them is to always switch it up. Go backhand, then go stick lift, go tie up, then back to backhand. You should win a lot of your face-offs that way as long as your centers are decent. There I took a nice one-timer, but my guy just didn't really have an accurate or powerful shot, so it didn't work out there. This next play, he had an okay opportunity, but he shot it way too soon. If he held on to it longer, I think I would have caught up to him and bumped him in the back to cause him to lose it. You'll see there I go again with that slap shot. This time it hits the iron, but sometimes it goes in. Up next is a great example of how to defend against the AI. They have a tough time scoring on their own. They really want to pass that puck, so I'm always gonna cover the passing lane. Not a whole lot of anything interesting happening here. He's gonna poke it from me, then he's gonna clear it, and he's gonna go for the line change. Here, I think I was rushing things a little bit, making this pass. I should have made another one instantly to keep the play alive. Whenever your goalie gets the puck, you should always try to pass it out, especially behind your own net. We see that the AI isn't very aggressive when it comes to their forecheck, so you don't want a face-off in your own zone. Here's another example of the defensive skill stick in action. I was scaring him so much that he just got rid of the puck. After that, we enter his zone fairly decently, I would say. We start moving the puck around and cycling it, but we didn't really find any good opportunities to shoot. We try to be a little bit fancy, and it's going to cost us. It, it costed you time, okay? That's why I said we. With the AI in the neutral zone, all I'm trying to do is take away some of his passes. I was just controlling someone along the blue line to stop him from making that pass. When it comes to facing the superstar AI, your neutral zone defense is probably your most important one. It's easiest to stop the AI from entering your zone compared to when they're already in your zone. And if they never enter your zone, that means they won't shoot at your net and they won't score. When he does enter my zone, my defensive skill stick is ready to poke the puck away. With nobody on his team wide open, I decide to play a little bit aggressively and try to bump him off the puck, which I'm going to do with a big hit right here. Offside indicator, pretty important. Don't want to rush in, but once it's off, I enter the zone. I don't have a good scoring opportunity from here, so my first thought is to go back and try to set up this one-timer. The guy receiving it was a little bit too far. He tries to enter the zone, I have four guys swarming around him. He can't do anything, except take the puck back from me. That's okay, we get it right back, nothing to worry about. With Pedersen, I'm going to go full speed blazing on the right side. I do the cheeky fake slap, which gives me a quality opportunity in front of the net. In previous years, what you could do is you can pull down on the right stick and then let go, and it would cause the AI to freeze up. 
I'm pretty sure it's not as effective anymore, but it might still catch him sometimes like that. My first goal is going to be coming up here off of the face-off. Off this face-off, I'm going to skate toward the face-off dot and end up with the puck. We protect the puck, keeping it in the zone, and start moving the puck around. We circle around the net with our backs toward the computer. That way, we're not vulnerable to a big hit. The AI chases me around, causing me to lose it, but I instantly go for the hit to get the puck back. With so many people in front of the net, I just gotta pass it to someone who's gonna get a good shot at the net. I could have gone for one more pass with the clean one-timer, but the rebounds take care of business as well. With 10 seconds left, he's gonna win the face-off. Again, we're gonna be blocking this blue line, so he's forced to make a play, like pass it for an offside. With four seconds left, you may be saying, Brian, let's just cut to the second period. There's nothing to see here. Well, you'd be wrong because I'd still take a decent shot when I enter the zone. When you're in a straight line in front of the goalie like that, taking a slap shot top corner isn't such a bad idea. Here are the stats after one period. He still only had one good shot and I had a few opportunities to score. Opening draw of the second period is going to lead to another goal. Not off this play, however, as he allows me to get in, but he's going to say, sorry, that's not for you. I go for a few big hits that... Uh, could have been way better. When he gets a pass off to the leading man, we just swarm him, defensive skill stick and all, and it's back to us. Butzik, a lefty on the right side, we're gonna have to cut across and shoot far side for the easy goal. Off the ensuing draw, Butzik is hungry for another one, so he's gonna pass it to Danico to get it started. Similar to the play in the first period, not in a prime position to shoot, so I skate back and look for someone who's wide open. He forces me out, and that's absolutely okay. I still have the puck, nothing has changed. In fact, it's gonna make it easier for me to enter the zone. But then I kinda, I forced that pass and that ended up not being a great play. Two on one, watch as I force him to clear this puck. He's gonna enter the zone, no passing options, he's gonna get rid of it. Somehow didn't pick that up, but that's okay because he gives it right back to me as I draw a penalty for the trip. He's gonna win this face off, but we charge right at him for the poke check. Our reaction is crap as we're not able to get it to someone who's not gonna get wrecked. But look at how quick I break out. Long stretch pass up, and we're going the other way. It's pretty much just me and this one defender. I try to burn by him. I realize I'm not going to get past him. I try to shoot far side. My shot gets stuffed. And then over here, I'm going to get a decent opportunity short side that could have easily gone in. Puck is still ours. He tries to knock us off. We spin back and get a solid opportunity here with the one-timer. We try to cycle it around and get to the slot for the shot. We end up hitting some guy's face instead. 30 seconds left on the power play. We try something similar here, but the little bump means we don't go through with our shot. One more time, a bit too many bodies there. Computer is shorthand, but he's not going to clear the puck. He's going to try to go in since he's down by two goals. He makes a nice pass along the blue line, but again, there's just nothing that he can do. Back the other way, notice how it's been forever since the AI got in his 1-3-1 formation. We break out so fast, the AI doesn't even have time for that. Another thing I wanted to point out is when the goalie gets the puck, the opposing goalie, smother him. Don't let him pass it out. Again, it's that difference between him having possession of the puck and it being a face-off where you could potentially have possession of the puck. The superstar AIs love passing it out with the goalie. And that's exactly what happens here as we win the face-off, get it back to Hamannik, who is in prime position for this slap shot. This is the second period. He needs a line change badly to get fresh legs on the ice. The one time he doesn't clear it, we get the puck right back so he's not able to finish his line change. A quick pass and one-timer here would have been ideal to the middle guy, to Hamannik, but instead this pass becomes the furthest thing from ideal. While we gave him a quality breakaway opportunity here, normally what you want to do is chase after him with the defensive skill stick out and hold it out to his forehand side so that if he ever switched back, your stick is going to be there so that he loses the puck. Again, stopping him from entering the zone, we go for a stick lift because we're close enough to not make contact with his face. I make a ballsy play here to go in the middle of everybody. It works out to the point where I can make a couple of quick passes for that one-timer opportunity. This AI is all by himself. Don't give him any time to make any decisions. Charge after him, make him take a weak shot at the net. We're gonna skate in and there's gonna be way too many people behind us, so we're gonna circle around the net this time. We're gonna uh, get hit by a train. I didn't know those operate on ice. Slowpoke McKinnis has to get all the way back and stop this from becoming a goal. He wasn't really on a breakaway, so instead we opted to protect him from cutting across the goalie. Sometimes I get a little bit too aggressive with my hits, as you'll see here when I lose the puck. This probably was a bit questionable, 
but I really like how my players back check and I'm able to catch up to the AI to stop him from getting any kind of opportunities. Next time we get in, we get a pretty decent opportunity with Voracek to score a goal. After that, we just have to cycle it around to try to get it to someone who is in better position to take the shot. I felt that once I got around that defender, I could take a shot. I was wrong. Butik didn't listen to me. I said that the order to take the shot was from someone else, but he decided to shoot anyway. And then when he's in my zone, he just doesn't have any good passing lanes wide open. With this pass, I recognize that his defender is skating backwards, so I know I can burn right by him. It doesn't turn into a goal, but it's still a great opportunity on the breakaway. We pressure him enough to cause this bad pass. We go for the one-handed tuck, and then the rebound shot. It's not good enough. And then a one-timer and another shot. This computer must be sweating. No, it's actually bad. He might short circuit, but good for us because then he's just going to sit there and we can do whatever we want. It's like the computer put down his controller. Going to skip over to the third period because in that case, nothing did happen in the last few seconds of the second. Entering the zone, he pushes us back out and that's okay. We try to quickly get back in, but that's not going to happen. We pass to Voracek, a forward where we can do just that. He left the guy wide open for this one timer, so that was a pretty decent shot. Another chance that could have gone in the back of the net for me. So it's early in third period. We still need three goals to get the maximum number of points. I'm trying to focus a little bit more on my offense at this point as my defensive skill stick is going to come in clutch for this turnover. You see, I'm focusing on my offense so much that I take this uh, pretty bad shot. I don't think I, I aimed that shot, so that's why it was pretty bad. It was pretty questionable. Sitting on the blue line right in front of him causes him to make that pass, so now we're going the other way. I try to make a pass, but it got intercepted, and as soon as I steal it back from him, I take that shot because I know that it's right in front of the net, and that slap shot with my defenseman was another quality opportunity. Finally, this one timer that I keep trying to go for finally pays off as we're up by three. He's going to get a silly offside, so we're going to skip over that as he enters the zone and we force him into a corner. Nasland almost working for the Germans there, keeps it out of the net, but this also causes the computer to get a few shots in front. I don't think they were all that great, however, so we'll let him have it. He finally gets some cycling time in my zone. And notice here how I'm taking away the pass because that dude was not going to take a good shot on his backhand. Here I was being a little bit silly with a move that probably wouldn't even fool a rookie AI. But again, this defense right here, just nothing he can do about it. The AI gets so frustrated that he can't do anything about it that he gets another penalty. I do a few cute spins in his zone, maybe trying to open something up. But no, no one's really open for any passes. I can't really take the shot. He forces me out and then I have to wait an eternity for my guy to get on side. A quick pass gave Naslin some space and I wish I made another pass here instead of taking the shot. But that is going to put us a man up halfway through the third period. We're going to win this draw and we're going to get it back to McKinnis who I thought had a pretty good shooting lane. Except he decided he was going to end that man's unborn family instead. I force a one-timer in front of the net because might as well. We chase back after the puck. I make sure to circle around the net instead of being caught by the forward in front of me. And nobody on my team knows when an offside is. We're heavy on the forecheck when he wins this faceoff. Two guys around him to try to take the puck away from him. He dumps it in, so it gives us the puck instead. Easy long stretch pass up to Naslin helps us enter the zone. And a nice pass back to my defenseman to open up this opportunity. McKinnis, however, has other plans. From behind the net, we get this great one-timer opportunity with Ronick, but he makes the save. We're going to give him another little breakaway, not on purpose, of course. But look at my skill stick. I was waiting for him to stay to the forehand side to touch the puck and cause him to lose it. Another slap shot from this point generates a juicy rebound, but uh, the shot animation was just not in my favor. When it comes to this shot, I was hoping to get a little bit further past the defender so that I could take a shot at the net, but it doesn't work out. It happens. He pokes it out, and we're going to make a, uh, a bad pass, but a nice recovery. I instantly went for the hit so that he has no time to make a pass. We're going to enter the zone with McKinnis, do the spin, and then shoot short side. Bishop makes the save because apparently he has my number. You can call me whenever you want, baby B. Sorry, that wasn't meant for all of you guys. Quit creeping on our conversations. Failing with his hit here allows us to curl back around and take a decent far side shot at the net. I know I haven't scored on that shot in this game, 
but believe me when I say that it actually goes in. Bishop's just not feeling it. This is going to be a beautiful play with Dustin Brown. Who else? Makes a pass to Niskanen and then across, and the goalie just felt bad. Hell, he was saving all of those shots that should have gone in previously. I should have like 10 goals by now. That's okay. It's 4 nothing. We need one more goal with three minutes left on the clock. Again, playing a little bit more aggressively on defense to try to get this puck back as fast as possible. He's going to make this pass to the point, take a shot from a pretty weird angle. That's not going to go in. Koivu is going to bring this up. He's going to do the curl, and the ref's going to scare the crap out of me because I thought I was about to get checked. Now you guys are going to see my biggest gripe with uh, any of the NHL games, these offsides. Like, he just didn't even bother to try to get back across the blue line. I know we kind of try to make it realistic with how much offside calls there are in the actual NHL, but this is ridiculous. He's going to get the puck, and when he enters my zone, takes a really weird shot. All we had to do was run into that to take it away from him. He's going to try setting up his laser-like passes with the dying minute of the game, but I'm going to tell him, no, not today. Entering the zone, we're going to make a disgusting drop pass. Pass it across for the one-timer, but it's not a goal. Bishop doesn't want me to get number five. He's going to continue to struggle here. It's like he can't even hold onto the puck for more than two seconds. When he does get by me... There's just no good opportunities. Like, you're not going to score from there. He gets a decent-looking one-timer here, similar to how I scored earlier. But I think he's just aiming in the wrong place. 22 seconds left. He's going to get another penalty to give us a power play. We hold on to the puck here to shoot far side. Instead, it bounces off of Voracek, who isn't going to shoot that in himself. 16 seconds left. He's going to win it. He's going to clear it. He's saying, Brian, I'm not letting you get five goals on me. 10 seconds left. He's going to leave Alex Tuck wide open, so this is going to give me a great opportunity to try to score. Curl it again. Shoot short side. Bishop says no. Well, it looks like I'm not going to get the max points for this game. Sorry. I tried. I, I really did try. I tried as hard as I could. I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. I'm a failure. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Oh my god, I did it. McKinnis, my hero, finally scoring from that position that I kept trying to score the whole game. We did it. We beat the high overall squad battles team on Superstar. We got five goals against them. Pretty sure we got 15 shots. We got the five goal differential. We got the maximum number of points. Look at just how fast he unleashed that snipe. So that is gonna end that battle. Hope you guys enjoyed my commentary. Hope it was good enough for you guys to understand how to take that information in with you to the next game. Hope your next Superstar Battles turn out just as well. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you still need some help. If you still have any kind of questions, I would be happy to answer them. And be on the lookout for more of my videos where I help you guys become better at NHL 20.